Hi, everybody. Welcome to the God Hour. I'm Michelle. I'm Abhishek. Yeah, and we started a series called How to Walk in Your Calling. That's right. And this week's subject is is really good. It's something necessary even for your walk with the Lord. It is uh, the subject of obedience. Uh, we, As we said, as uh, Michelle said, we are talking about how to walk in your calling and we were talking a few few series about why calling is important and uh, we were talking last time was why is it important to have the right choices in your life that will help you to walk in your calling yeah and today's subject is so vital to your walk with the lord and especially to walk in the calling that god has placed in your life yeah when jesus was here on the earth he always focused on his will I mean, the Father's will, he wanted to fulfill his will. And every day of in his life, he just want, he was focused and determ- determined to, to fulfill the plan of God on his life. And God all, also wants you to fulfill the plan of God. He has for you. God has a wonderful plan for your life. If some of you might be suffering with, uh, with all the burdens in your life, uh, you might have been in the wrong place. We know where to be when someone is in the wrong place. And you also know if you are in the wrong place. And God actually wants you to, in His timing, in His perfect place for you. And that's what it is, the calling of God. It does, that's the will of God for your life. And it takes obedience. It takes your right choice. It's, it takes your yes to, to, towards the call of God. The plan of God for your life or the calling or even um, the steps you should take. The Lord will show that to you. He will guide you, lead you. He'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you where to go. And um, even the heart, like how how you're supposed to do it, with what heart attitude. But it takes obedience to hear, number one, you need to hear what God is telling you. And then number two, you need to obey what He is telling you. And when you do that step by step, you begin to see yourself walking in the perfect will of God for your life. And you see yourself walking in your calling. Yeah, as he was talking about hearing, it's, it's really important when you talk about the hearing, it requires relationship, right? So when we talk about the relationship with God, when you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, the Father, His Father becomes your Father now. And that's why Jesus said, our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Meaning He becomes your Father and you have now relationship with your Father God. And then you, that's how you can hear His voice and you can be understand His will and uh, His plans for your life. You might be wondering, how do I hear God? Actually, God is able to speak to you. He will put desires in your heart or He'll give you wisdom. Like all of a sudden you have like an idea of what to do. Um, That's right. You know, Romans 8.28 says, Those that are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. To be led by the Spirit means that you are obe- obedient to the Spirit of God. That means that the Lord is in front of you and He's showing you this is the way to go. And then you're following Him and you you are being led by Him. Don't move in front of God. Don't get ahead of the Lord. Mm. Don't, don't like decide your own thing and then go ahead and ask the Lord, Lord, can you bless this step? I decided mm. to do this. Can you bless my plan? Can you bless my will? It's actually the opposite. If you just choose the will of God, it's already blessed. All you have to, he- to do is to spend time and pray, read the word of God and listen. And hear the word of the Lord. Hear from the Holy Spirit. And when He shows you what to do, it is so important for you to obey. Just step out in faith and obey. Trust Him and take that next step. Take that next move in your life. Uh, Romans 8.14 uh, says, as many are as led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Means these are the mature sons of God. And God wants you in that, in that, in that place that God will see you as a mature son. And one of the requirement, the main requirement for that is you to be led by the Spirit of God. The word they led is the word ago in Greek, which is being pulled to a certain direction. It's like someone is pulling, uh, I'm not sure if you have bungee jump, but when they will tie the rope around your 
ways, right? And that's why someone pulls you towards a direction. That's how Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. Bible says He is the helper and He is the counselor and He will help you in time, time of need, right? And He will pull you in certain direction that you have to take. As the example, there might be uh, uh, a direction in your life that you are asking. It could lead to it could lead to a better future. It could lead to better things in your life. And you might be wondering, which one should I take? Which direction should I take? And the Holy Spirit will lead you to exact place because He knows the, your future and He knows what's good for you. And He knows you and He knows what's good for you. Yeah, you might be right now, <clears throat> excuse me, out of the will of God and you're wondering, how did I get here? How come my life is not moving forward? Well, maybe the Lord has told you to do something years ago and you have never obeyed it. Yeah. You know, how can God tell you to do something else when you haven't obeyed the last instruction that he has told you to do? But my friend, just do what the Lord has already told you to do. And as you obey that, then the Lord will show you the next step and the next step and the next step. You know, John 14, 15 in the Amplified, it says here, uh, Jesus is speaking. If you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. So what, what truly shows that you love God? It is when you obey his commandments. So what are his commandments? It is the word of God, yes, but it's also the things that the Holy Spirit speaks to you to do. It is the commandments that you hear by the Holy Spirit, and it's also the commandments that you can read in the word of God. And the degree that you obey God shows the degree, degree, the degree that you love God. Or the degree that you obey the Lord is the degree that you have given your heart to Him. So if you have given all your heart to the Lord and you're completely sold out for Him, that means that whenever He says something, you're like, yes, Lord, I'll do it now. And you do it quickly. But if you are half-hearted, like you have one foot with God, or a part of your heart loving God, but part of your heart loving a sin or loving the world or the things of the world. Well, then when God speaks to you, it's like, oh, should I be? Oh, let me think about it. So my friend, give your heart fully to the Lord, surrender to him and fully obey once he speaks to you to do mm -hmm. anything. And even like when he tells you to give something up, give it up because there's nothing that that you that God takes, you know, like and he only takes the bad. God doesn't take like like good things from your life. You know, it's like he takes sickness away from you. He takes depression away from you. He takes suffering away from you. But God doesn't take good things like your health. He doesn't take your like relationships and make it bad, you know. So there's blessing on in obedience. That's what I wanted to to emphasize. There is Big blessing in obedience. Mm. Uh, uh, as he was saying, I, I was getting reminded of this verse. First Corinthians 4, verse 20, it says, For the kingdom of God is not just a matter of talk only. Like, it, you just, uh, it's not just about talking. It's, it's, it is living by God's power. It's obeying Him. It's moving in action. It's, it's, it's about your choices. It's, it's about your determination towards the, the call of God. Jesus fulfilled and or obeyed unto the point of death. He was obedient. That's why we have to be obedient because Jesus set a perfect example for us. So we have now, we have an, uh, we see someone, example, Jesus as our elder brother. We see him doing it. That's how, and he said, you will do even greater works, meaning you can do it through your life. You also can move in that direction. You can live a life of holiness. You can live a life of obedience. You can live a life in the power of God. You can do those things because Jesus set an example for you. And I'll tell you this, your, your actions or obedience is the proof of what you believe. When you just believe something, you confess it, but your actions will prove it. Your obedience will prove it, that you really love God. That's what we see in the Bible. Abraham, when Jesus told him to go out of this nation and go there, I'll, I'll bless you. What Abraham did was he moved out. He didn't question God. He was not moved with undoubt, unbelief. 
and he was not like arguing with God, but he was just, he knew the voice of God and he did exactly what God was asking him to do. So God is telling you right now, if God is telling you to do something in your life and you haven't obeyed before, I would encourage you right now to, to go back to him and ask him, how can I do what you were ta- telling me to do? Because your actions, your obedience is the proof of what you believe. Yeah, Jesus is our Lord and he is our Savior and he is also our example. As my husband said, in John fourteen thirty one, it says here, Jesus is talking. But I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. So even Jesus obeyed God the Father because he loved, loved the Father. So even us, when we obey God, it is an act of worship. It is an act of service. It is an act of our love towards our Heavenly Father. That's why we obey Him. Actually, whatever you do in life, the Bible says to whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Meaning, whatever you're doing, if you're doing your job, do your job not for your boss. Do your job heartily, meaning meaning from your heart, with with passion or do it like as a worship unto your heavenly father or if you're in the ministry minister as unto the father whatever you do with for example maybe you're giving to the poor do it unto the lord Mm. you're doing this thing this expression of your love to god yes you're giving to man but it's really because you love god and you're doing it unto the lord so whatever you're called to do maybe business or maybe in the ministry or, or whatever, your housewife, the motivation of that should be love, your love for God. And as you love God, it is automatic that you'll be loving your neighbor as yourself and you'll be loving others. So as you walk in your calling, it should all be about the love of God. Yeah, that's right. We have to be the obedience Uh, is driven by love that's what we are talking about the obedience is driven by love if you truly love god the obedience will come naturally out of your heart right if if you would you want to obey god you you just want to obey his voice you want to listen to him you want to obey him and that's how the obedience is driven it's driven by the love so so the more you fill yourself with the love of god the more he lo- you you get the revelation of how much he loves you the the obedience becomes natural in your life and god really wants you to to obey him god wants you to give to the poor as he was saying god wants you to give bless uh give to the uh, i would say give, give honor god do all these things and follow his plan for your life how you, will you do it it's it's based on how how much the love of God you have in your heart and the obedience will flow out of your heart. Sometimes it's, it's, if you really look into it, it's not what you do in your life. It's how you do in your life that makes the difference. You might be giving to the poor, but it's, it's just, is, uh, are you looking for your benefit or are, do you really have compassion to help those people? That really makes a difference because Jesus also said when he was, he saw the multitude, he was, he was moved with compassion. And then there was miracles. That's why even the, the ministry of what Jesus did, the healing ministry, was, there, was a, uh, there was a thing that when he was moved with compassion, and he, I, I really believe when we as a Christian, we move with compassion, there will be greater things that will be happening from our life and through our life. God wants you to be filled with his love today. God really, really wants you to be filled his, with his love. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 13 in the Amplified, it says here that if I have all sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but do not have love reaching out to others, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it does me no good at all. So tied to what my husband was saying, If you do all these things, but the motivation of your heart is not love, it means nothing. You can have your, if you can have your body burned, die as a martyr, but if you did it to boast about yourself, 
it, it there's no reward. But if you even if you give feed the poor and give all your money to the poor, but your motive is not love, but it's like selfishness, or mm. maybe you want to be it's pride. Maybe you want to be known as wow that guy's so generous, or that guy's the biggest giver. Like if, if the motivation is wrong for your obedience, then it's it 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 it, it does no good at all. The Bible says so. Check the motives of your heart. Why are you doing what you're doing? You know, even maybe as you're worshiping in church, you're worshiping. Are you worshiping to truly worship God? Or is it because you want people to see how spiritual you are? Or oh, look at me, look how I'm worshiping. No, it's God always looks at the heart and we should always do a self-check. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Mm. It is so important. Even um, Isaiah one is it eighteen or nineteen? Okay, Isaiah one nineteen yeah. says, "If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land." Even That's that right. part, willing, it shows the heart attitude yeah. and the heart motive. Did you obey, but inside you're rebellious? Like, yeah, I'm just doing this because I'm forced to do it, but I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm. I'm angrily doing it, but. God says, if you are willing, mm. I feel in that willing also yeah, is a joyfully, yeah. a cheerfully doing. Like in uh, Second Corinthians, it says that God loves a cheerful giver. That's right. So if you are a cheerful obeyer, is that a word? <laughs> if you cheerfully obey God, you know, the heart, the heart of love, the willing heart, the heart that says, Lo God, I love you so much that I would love to do this for mm. you. It says here, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Meaning, blessing will come upon you. God's favor will be abundant in your life. That things will just work for you. Mm. And, and, and just, yeah, the favor of God will, you, the blessing, the favor, and the joy of God will be so abundant. Yeah, when we talk about willingness, it's, it's really a, the matter of heart. That you want to be faithful in what you are doing. You want to be accountable in what you are doing. You want to give your best. When I talk about the willingness of God, you want to be diligent at it. That's why in, in Deuteronomy 28, it says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, and to observe carefully all the commandments which, which He commands you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord. So it's being really diligent to the obedience or the call of God. Lord, I really want to do this. It's, it's not that I, it's a work for me. It's not that it's a, it's a stress or it's a burden to do it. But I delight in doing it. That's what we have to ask for the heart. Delight yourself in the Lord delighting in, in the Lord and He will give you the desires. What are the desires? To love Him, to love to obey Him, to love and walk in obedience. It takes the supernatural joy that comes from the Lord. It takes the supernatural joy. And all these blessings uh, we will go, to, uh, we will read in few, uh, few in a while. But really, Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me, right? So we, it's, it's a point in time that we have to, have to really obey him. We have to say, Lord, I obey you. Jesus, why, why did Jesus say that? Jesus, till the point of death, he was obedient, meaning he did it for you. He, he saw how much it will help you, how much, how much that sacrifice on the cross will help you. So your obedience has a result. It's not uh, not always helping you. It might not always uh, help you, but it might help someone else because you're you're being obedient. It will definitely help people, and it will also help you. Obedience is the natural response for someone who gets get filled with love. Mm. Who is good. filled with love? That's good. It's the natural response. We are actually uh, as a human being. We are naturally obedient we love we love to uh as a as a, be obedient to our parents right that that's that's our natural re response it's 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 the joy that comes when we want to obey our parents 
So it really takes, when, when we talk about obedience, willingness is so, so, so important. So when you get filled with the love of the Father and you feel His love, the natural reaction will be that like a heart of worship bubbles up and you're like, God, thank you. You're so good. Now, how, what can I do to please you? It's an automatic response when you feel the love of God, when you're filled with His love. As my husband was saying, that's the same way when you see that, that your parents love you so much, something happens on the inside where you just want to obey. And also obedience is a form of honor right. where you honor God so much that you dare not displease him or you dare not disobey, disobey him. Mm. It's also the fear of the Lord where you, you dare not rebel against the Lord. And the word even says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Mm. You do not want to rebel against God because that's not in you. You know, a child of God a, a child of God that has been touched, touched by the love of God wants to obey God. Mm. You don't want to sin. You want to be pure. You want to be like your heavenly father. You want to imitate him. Mm. So it's important that we get filled with the love of God consistently and constantly. Yeah, and where right. does that happen? As you feed yourself the word of God and as you worship and as you pray, God's presence now will come and fill you and touch you and you can have a touch of God um, every single day. Yeah. I just want to say that your obedience is noticed by God. Every step that you do is noticed by God. Jesus even said that if you... Uh, f if you give a drink to one of the one of my disciples, it will you will be rewarded in heaven. So your obedience has reward, even if you are actively working in the ministry or not. I don't know that, but your obedience towards the kingdom of God is always noticed. So don't be just a church lover; be a kingdom lover, right? You do do things for the kingdom of God. You are moved with the kingdom. You are moved with the compassion for the king. When I say kingdom, you have a king, and you you want to obey the uh, the uh, the king. Even when we talk about, if I uh, we will not go detail, but centurion faith, he knew the the value to obey, and he knew it. That's why the Bible calls it the great faith because he knew uh, when you obey, it's it's a it comes with greater authority. It it comes with greater authority because you are under submission of. of greater authority so jesus wants you to obey and he will always always help you he will always back you up with his power because once the bible says to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover the obedience bible calls uh when bible gives you a promise on or, or a or a task or a or calls tells you to obey do something it comes with the power of god Lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's in the same verse. So when you even, even Bible says, when you are generous to, to the poor, you are lending to the Lord. <laughs> See, it always comes with a result. It comes with a reward that God is backing you up. And at all those steps that you do, you obey, it's noticed by heaven. It's noticed by God himself. And it's, it's, I believe it's written, uh, written that you did this, 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 this. Not just you said it, but you actually moved. You actually went and helped people. And that's what we need. We need people in this world that will help each other, that will love, not just speak, I love you, but it's like really have a heart to, what do you want me to do for you? Well, how can I help you, right? How can I help you? Uh, even even children, if we teach them, uh, if, if uh, is there someone do you help today in the uh, in your school? They, that will really totally transform their their perspective of their world, their their mind to to constantly love people is true obedience. Yeah, I feel to share this verse. The Holy Spirit prompted me. It's John 15, 16. It says here, Jesus is speaking, you didn't choose me. Mm. I chose you. God is speaking to someone right now watching and he's saying, I chose you. I picked you out of the crowd. And I hear it, to continue, it says, I chose you, I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father 
will give you whatever you ask for using my name. It says here that you didn't choose God. God was the one that chose you and he chose you for this mighty thing that he wants to do on the earth. God wants to accomplish this particular thing in this time right now. And he chose you to do it. Again, the plan of God for your life and your calling, it's so specific to you. And God chose you, and that's why he designed you specifically for that specific calling or that plan. So I just I just felt to share that. You didn't choose him. He was the one that chose you. And he actually chose you even before the day you were born. And the plan of God has been waiting for you to just hear and obey. Or maybe you have already heard what God wants you to do, but you haven't obeyed. And God is waiting for you to obey. Actually, I know a lady and recently, just today, she finally obeyed God to walk where God wants her to be and God told her to do this thing six years ago but finally after six years she finally surrendered to the plan of God for her life and upon that obedience and surrender to do that specific instruction of God as she now walks I am 100% sure that that is going towards her calling and her destiny because her, her number one desire or one of her highest desires is to fulfill the call of God on her life. But God gave an instruction six years ago. And that's why, you know, like, wh- wh- how come things aren't working? How come I'm still not, you know, walking in my calling? But because God gave up an instruction that wasn't obeyed. But now, the moment obedient comes, then it's like a forward motion now. And the plan of God now is not hindered in her life and even in your life once you take that bold step of obedience. Mm. Yeah, that's why in, in Deuteronomy 28, if you obey the voice of the Lord your God, you have to, you, it's it's not a choice, but in in, a, in 1 verse 1 to 14, it says about the blessings of God, how God will bless you. But after v- verse 15, if you do not obey the voice of God, this will happen to you. It's, it's also like, uh, it's, it's a choice that you, you stay in his presence. You, it's a choice that you, you, you obey your obedience, right? Even in Psalms 91, it says, he who abides in the secret place of the, he who dwells in the secret place, uh, of the most high shall abide under the shadow of almighty. But this is only applicable to who, he who dwells those people and he will protect you. He will guide you. Similarly, he, when you come under the obedience, obedience, you want to really obey God. For those who completely obey God, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, verse 2, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Verse 3, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Verse 4, as I'm saying this, I also declare over you, over your family, Amen. over your nations. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herd, the increase of your cattle, the offspring of your flocks. Verse 5, blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Amen. You will not lack any food in your house. Never. You will not lack. You are well provided for. Verse 6. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed Amen. shall be when you go out. I receive that. Amen. <laughs> and verse 7. The Lord will cause your enemy who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you, you one way, and they shall flee before you seven ways. Hallelujah. Verse 8. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand and he will bless you in the land the, which the Lord your God is giving you. Hallelujah. So I'll repeat this again. He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Some of you, you, are, uh, you, you will see, see the miracle soon that God has appointed, God has provided for you and you will know that it's from the Lord. It's from the Lord. He knows how to take care of you. So the Lord will bless you in the land he, which He is giving you. 
even in the life of Abraham, Bible says, because he obeyed God, he was counted righteous. So God is calling you to obey him today. God is calling you to be obedient to his voice and his calling. And that will transform your life. And also the blessing will flow to your children's children. And that's how your, your family, your name will be remembered as someone who followed God with all your heart. Actually, it is impossible to walk in your calling and to walk in the plan of God for your life if you don't obey the voice of the Lord our God. For example, let's say that um, the the end or or you're called to go to America, but to go to America usually it's at least uh, let's say at least two flights from the Philippines. You have to fly to Japan and from Japan you have to fly to New York. If you never take the plane to go to Japan, you can you'll miss the plane from Japan to New York. God actually will give you step-by-step -step instructions to get to your destiny. That's right. But you need to follow the the the, the voice of God step by step. But you know, even if it's been a long time that you haven't obeyed you can start now. It's never too late to start walking mm. in your calling. It's never too yes. late to start walking in the plan of God mm. for your life. And the very first step, That's okay, right. that you need to take to start walking in your calling and the very first step that you need to take to start walking in the plan of your life is to get to know the one who appointed you, That's right. to get to know the one who chose you. And then that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He chose you and he appointed you. And when you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, now he can come and live on the inside of you and start leading and guiding you. Mm. So if you have never received the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I would love, we would love to pray for you right now. You know, the Bible says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus mm. shall be saved. And the Bible also says that if you receive Jesus as your Lord, and if you believe that he died on the cross and he rose from the dead, you'll be saved. Saved. So right now, if you want to surrender your life to the Lord, that means you make a firm decision that from today, I choose to surrender my life That's right. to Jesus. And from today, I choose to walk in God's plan for my life. If that is you right now, close your eyes and pray this from your heart, but speak it out loud. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I surrender my heart to you. I surrender my life to you. Forgive me for my sins. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and you rose from the dead. Be my Lord and my Savior. Mm. Lord, show me your plan for my life. Show me your calling for my life. And I choose to obey you and I choose to serve you and love you with all my heart. And right now, I choose to forgive those that have sinned against me. Right now, I forgive everyone that ever hurt me. Fill me now, Lord, with your Holy Spirit and your fire and give me the power to live for you. Give me your anointing. Anoint me to serve you and to walk with you. Today, I turn my back on sin and from this day forward, I belong to you a hundred percent. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. 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 And Amen. And God is delivering so many people right now as they are watching. The physical bondage is being broken yes. right now. Bible says that the yoke is broken by the anointing of God. The anointing breaks every yoke. The spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me. So right now, Lord, as I lift my brother and sisters right now all across the world and I, and thank you by the power of God their yoke is broken in yes. Jesus name the heaviness is broken right the now. paralysis is broken in the name of Jesus. Jesus the heart disease the pancreas disease is broken the liver the kidney disease is broken the stroke is broken and all the other disease and sickness that's causing trouble is broken right now Right now, do something that you've never done before. Move your legs, run around. God is healing you right now in Jesus' name. 
So, Father, thank you for complete healing, complete restoration in their house, in their family, in their body, and also their finances. God will do a miracle for you. I'm believing that's for you. God will do a miracle for you as you obey Him, as you say yes. God will do today. God will do a miracle for you. In Jesus' name, we release in Jesus' name. I also break witchcraft from your life in Jesus' name. Any curses, any words that was spoken to you that have affected your heart, that have hindered the call of God on your life, I break every limitation, I break every chain and every struggle and every addiction. Everything that is chaining you and restricting your freedom, be free right now. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.